Well, California's real estate market is on fire, but what's the best way to capitalize on all of that action? Jess is live with an expert who can break it all down, whether you're in the market to buy or sell. Hey, Jess. Hey, Danny, that's right. There are so many questions right now surrounding the real estate market. Are we in a buyer's market, a seller's market? Are we in another real estate uh, housing bubble? So I brought in housing industry expert, John Millette, who's going to give us the 411 on everything we need to know. Hi, John. How are you? Hi, great, Jessica. Great to be with you today. I am so excited to talk to you today. So there is this big debate. Are we in a buyer's market, a seller's market, and are we in another real estate bubble again? Definitely not a bubble because demand is so much greater than supply right now. Underwriting parameters are not irresponsible as they were back in the subprime mm -hmm. prices. And it really is not in a bubble. It's just that we don't have enough supply of homes on the market. That's really the issue. So for the folks out there who are not familiar with what a bubble is, what is the real estate bubble? Well, a bubble is basically it's got a false foundation. It basically is built on something, a house of cards, you might say. And so uh, like the subprime crisis, all of a sudden when prices started going down, mm -hmm. then uh, people's equity dried up very quickly because they were already at zero down payments when yeah. they bought the home. Yeah. And of course, the payments doubled. And so they could no longer make the payments because they had really bad loans. Okay, so then let's talk about the inventory shortage crisis. How do we navigate that? Yeah, the best way to navigate that, if you want to buy a home, is to be able to really have the why of what you, how you want to buy, what mm -hmm. you want to do. You know, so many times people focus just on the tactics. We like to focus on the strategy, which is the why. Why do I want to buy? Because if you've got a strong why, then you can power it through the disappointments of not getting offers accepted, things of that nature. For me, it's very personal. Yeah. You know, I grew up in the projects. I grew up in the welfare. And, you know, and I just decided that I don't want that environment. I want something that's stable that yeah. I can depend on where I can put a picture on the wall when I want to. Yeah. You know? And the why is whether you want to live in this or whether you want to purchase for an investment. Sure. So mm -hmm. let's talk about uh, for the folks who want to invest. How do you know what neighborhood to invest in? What's a smart neighborhood? What's a yeah. smart investment? What neighborhood? Basically, it's really location. It really still is location, location. And so you want to buy the smallest home you can in the nicest area that you can. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really what it comes down to. And then put enough money down so that you can have positive or at least breaking cash flow to start with. Okay, and for the folks that want to live in the home, right. uh, how do you set yourself apart from other offers? How do you make sure that your offer is going to get accepted? Uh, that's a great question. So the first thing to do is make sure that you are ironclad pre-approval. I mean ironclad. If there's any issues, if there's commissions, if you're self-employed, okay. whatever it might be, you want to make sure that you're really well approved. Okay. And then the, the, the second most important thing is to get a real estate professional that knows how to make the offer. Okay. A great real estate professional is worth their weight in gold. They do mm -hmm. a great job and they can help differentiate you when you make the offer. Okay. And then there's always some mistakes. When I purchased my first home, I said, okay, I'm not going to do this mistake again. Second time around, I didn't make it, but there was another mistake. So how do you avoid those common home buyer mistakes? The most important thing is is to focus with the lender and be the lender's got to be your team member. Okay. The lender's really got to be a part of your team of what you're doing mm -hmm. because once you're pre-approved and, and you've got it all greased, then you're in great shape. And getting a real estate professional that can help you makes a big difference. All right. And then, of course, if you want more information from John, you have a book, Buy yep. Your First Home Today. There are a lot of stories in this book. Yep, a lot Tell of stories. It. Yep. Yep, I wrote that originally, and I read it after I read, uh, <laughs> wrote it, and I thought, this is the worst book I've ever oh, read. No. And, uh, and I thought, how can we make mortgages interesting? So yeah. what we did is we made it aspirational. We put stories in of people who came to me that didn't think they could qualify, yeah. and they could qualify. Got them in their homes in the next 30 to 60 days. Fantastic. It's a great read. Yeah, well, thank you so much, John. Uh, so much information, really a lot to think about. You know, people want to buy their home and they just don't know how to get started, how to do it. So thank right. you so much. And oh, of course, you, you can always pick up his book on Amazon or on his website. Um, so, Danny, I know you just bought your first home, <laughs> but um, for those that are still looking, you can do it. There's a home out there for you. So just uh, Definitely. talk to John. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I was sitting here thinking, Jess, I needed John. Having a coach is a great idea. I still have questions. <laughs> Absolutely, I know. I, that's exactly how I am. I'm, I already told him. I'm like, I'm going to call you and just pick your brain on everything real estate. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Jess. And thank you, John, for all that great information.